This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Thank and praise God for everything in your life. You can, you can wake up and thank and praise God for everything in your life. You may not have all that you want in your life, but you need to look around, have a flashback, and thank and praise God for everything that you have. This is a part of setting your thermostat. You can get up in the morning like, Lord, I thank you. You can start off in the morning, in the bed before you get up. Lord, I thank you I had a good night's sleep last night. Thank you, Lord, I ain't got to go to work this morning. Isha <laughs> You, you, you can start off as a thermostat setting your day with Thanksgiving. Renew your mind, your spirit. Renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar, Taffy Dollar, Michael T. Smith, Gregory Diddow, and Andrew Womack. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Seats are limited, so register today. your Bibles, go with me to the book of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. Uh, I want to start reading at verse 16 through 18, and I want to read out of the King James and the New Living Translation. And tonight I want to teach, uh, just in line with what we've been talking about, we've been talking about overcoming uh, negative emotions, and I want to talk about overcoming negative emotions with Thanksgiving. And I want to show you how powerful Thanksgiving can be in overcoming those negative emotions that you are going to be challenged with. So I want you to read this out loud uh, with me, and uh, let's begin in uh, verse 16 and read through verse 18, and then uh, read the New Living Translation, and then I'll tell you what we're gonna, how we're going to deal with this. Uh, verse 16, he says, Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything, give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. Now, I want you to focus in. Of course, he says rejoice and pray and give thanks. Rejoice, pray, and give thanks. Now, why, why would this advice come in everything? So no matter what you're in, in good times, in bad times, when you're up, when you're down, he said this is the prescription for life. In everything, give thanks. Why? would he make this? And so, you see this colon here, and he says, for you giving thanks in everything is the will of God concerning you. You giving thanks in hard time is the will of God. You giving thanks in good time is the will of God. You giving thanks in the middle of uh, tragic times, it's the will of God. Now, don't misunderstand this. He's not saying give thanks to God for bad things that happen. See, we, it's easy for us to give thanks to God for good things that happen. But now he says, in everything, whether it is in a good thing or in a bad thing, the will of God is give thanks in everything that is the will of God concerning you. Now, how many of you know God is the most purposeful being around? And if he tells you to give thanks in everything, there is an absolute purpose for doing that. There is a reason for doing that. Now, I said to you before that circumstances, some of those circumstances, Satan uses it to stir up negative emotions to try to move you from the will of God for your life. Now, let's look at verse 18 in the New Living Translation. In everything, give thanks in everything, not for everything, but in everything give thanks. Now, look what he says here. He says in uh, uh, verse 18, he says, Be thankful in all circumstances. 
That's pretty clear, isn't it? Not some circumstances, not in just the happy circumstances, but give thanks in all circumstances. Why? This is God's will for you who belongs to Christ Jesus. Now, you know, you just cannot ignore that. In every circumstance, I mean, think about it. David needed a pair of shoes. He says, in that, Father, I thank you that there's provision to make that happen. Oh, my God, just had a tragic situation. Find something to give God thanks for in it. Tragic situation happened. Father, I give you thanks that all will be well. You had a car wreck. Father, I give you thanks that, you know, I, I survived it. I did not die. And then you, he said, this is the will of God. In everything, you find something to thank God in it. In it. You might be in a corner somewhere depressed out of your mind. Emotionally, you're stressed out. In the middle of that, he said, give God thanks in it. Now, I'm not going to, to, to ignore that. There's something he knows about life since he created it that he said in everything, give thanks. And as Christian people, we cannot ignore that advice because he is trying to show us something, and I believe he's trying to get us out of some things. So here's what I want to show you tonight. One of the major ways to deal with negative emotions is through and with the power of thanksgiving and gratitude. One of the major ways to deal with negative emotions, depression, loneliness, rejection, one of the major ways to deal with it, feeling thrown away, not feeling accepted. I mean, it, is, it will take a devil and put him in a hold that he can't escape from. One of the major ways to do it. Now, you, you're not going to feel like doing it. You may not want to do it. That, but there is an authority that God has put on giving thanks to him, especially when it goes against and contradicts how you feel. If you want to absolutely get victory over negative emotions, if you will begin to employ thanksgiving and gratitude, a gracious, grateful heart and attitude, if you begin to do this, you will overcome those negative emotions. In everything, give thanks. Well, look at Philippians chapter 4, uh, verses 6 through 7. What about when you're worrying? I'm not saying that you won't get worried. I'm not saying that you won't feel lonely. I'm not saying that you won't feel depressed. But I am saying to you, if you can't think of a scripture, or if you can't remember none of the stuff I've talked about in this series, find something to give God thanks in the middle of the thing. Learn how to do that. In verse 6, he says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with what? With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Verse 7, he says, and the peace of God, and the peace of God, which passes your understanding, it'll keep your heart and your minds. Peace will keep your mind. You start being thankful, peace will keep your mind. You start being thankful, peace will keep your mind. I dare you to try it. In the middle of a crazy situation where you feel like you're about to lose your mind, and you say, Lord, I thank you that you got me right now. He said, peace will keep your mind. And, and it'll do it through Christ Jesus. Now, uh, look at this uh, through the, look, let's, let's get New Living Translation on this here too, because when he talks about be careful for, for nothing, he's talking about don't worry, don't be anxious. You will have a ample opportunity to be worried about a lot of stuff. The New Living Translation says, don't worry about anything. Are you kidding me? People worry about everything. Now, if you tell me not to worry about anything, there must be something you're providing for me so that I can, can, can at least overcome worry when it comes up because worry seems to appear a lot. And he says, don't worry about anything. Now, here's, he's giving you a choice here. Instead of worrying, pray about everything. Instead of worrying about anything, pray about everything. Oh, my God. Instead of worry, so worry comes, the next thing you need to ask yourself, have I talked to God about this? Instead of worrying about anything, pray about everything, tell God what you need. All right, so you can sit there and you can worry about what you don't have. 
and you hadn't even thought about this. Have you talked to God about it? What are you worrying about? Take this to God, tell him what you need, all right, and then thank him for all he has done. In other words, you're worrying about, I ain't got enough money to pay this bill. I ain't got enough money to do that. He says, have you taken it to God? No. Well, take it to God. Lord, I thank you, and I need provisions to take care of this. I need provisions to take care of that. And then what do you do every time the worry comes up? Lord, I thank you that you heard me, and I have provisions to take care of that. See, that keeps you out of worry, and it keeps you into peace. It keeps you out of worry, and it keeps you into peace. You know, tomorrow, if you're not careful, you can open the door to all types of emotional feelings, feelings of loneliness, feelings of rejection, feelings of not being accepted. All right, let's go a little deeper in this now. Let me, let me give you three ways to practice, since we're talking about instructional. Let's give me, let me give you three ways to practice an attitude of thankfulness in everyday life. Three ways to practice an attitude of thankfulness in everyday life. You can practice these tomorrow if you need to. Number one, here's what you can practice. Thank and praise God for everything in your life. You can, you can wake up and thank and praise God for everything in your life. You may not have all that you want in your life, but you need to look around, have a flashback, and thank and praise God for everything that you have. This is a part of setting your thermostat. You can get up in the morning like, Lord, I thank you. You can start off in the morning, in the bed before you get up. Lord, I thank you I had a good night's sleep last night. Thank you, Lord. I ain't got to go to work this morning. <laughs> you, you, you can start off as a thermostat setting your day with Thanksgiving. Thank you I got a roof over my head, Lord. Thank you, Lord, like they're doing the Baptist church. I woke up in my right mind. Huh? Still have the use of my limbs. Got my eyes, hallelujah. Brain still function, and I can remember how old I am. See, you will preach to yourself, and before you know it, you're happy, praise God. Thank you, Lord, I might not have filet mignon in the, in, in the refrigerator, but I got ground beef. Hallelujah. <laughs> You've got to make a decision to practically Thank and praise God for everything in your life. Look at Hebrews chapter 13, verse 15. To thank and praise God for everything that you have in your life. These are practical things where you can do this. Hebrews 13, 15 says, By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is, with the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to him. So we're not talking about you, you know, thinking of the thanksgiving. He's talking about opening your mouth. Open your mouth, whether you're around somebody or not. Open your mouth. Walk around your house. Thank you, Lord, I got, I got chairs. Thank you, Jesus, I got light bulbs. Walk outside. Lord, look at how what you do. Thank you, Lord. You give him thanks with your mouth. <laughs> and watch your mouth thanksgiving eradicate those negative emotions that try to run your day. You open your mouth. Or turn your name and say, open your mouth and give God thanks. Amen? So here's the second way you can practice an attitude of thankfulness in, in your everyday life. Don't allow yourself to complain about anything. <laughs> Don't allow yourself to complain about anything. Wake up tomorrow and, and, and set yourself. How do you do that? The first thing you say to yourself tomorrow is, uh, tonight, oh, right now, watch your mouth. Turn your name and say, watch your mouth. Watch your mouth. That'll get you in trouble always. Watch your mouth. Sometimes I get ready to say it, I say, don't say it, don't say it. I say, you know what I'm going to say. Yeah, I got an idea, don't say it. <laughs> you can practice Thanksgiving by watching your mouth and don't complain about anything. Don't complain about, I'm challenging you right now. Don't complain about anything. I don't care what you have planned for tomorrow or don't have planned for tomorrow. Don't complain about anything. Well, y'all just don't understand. 
See, y'all might not, y'all might be able to afford a turkey, but I can't afford nothing but bologna. Don't complain. Get you some butter, fry that bologna up. <laughs> you know, it could, it could be good now. You know, I remember them days. If you do it right, the bologna will be good. It'll bless you. <laughs> get that bologna, get you some light bread, some mustard, stick some tomatoes on top of that thing, shut your mouth now. <laughs> get some Pringles tater chip to go with that thing. The bologna can bless you now. You just got to know how to work it. Don't complain about anything. Don't complain about it. Some of y'all, somebody got a taste for some bologna right now. Praise the Lord. <laughs> y'all remember that bologna? You put it in that pan and then the heat and that thing blew up at the top like y'all are. You already know, right? Have you ever, have you ever had a, 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 a cheese? You know, you used to melt the sheet cheese. In, anybody ever got government cheese? Don't raise your hand. I'm not trying to invite. Okay. <laughs> in the big old brown box, the plastic around it, and, and you got to lean your weight in on it. And then it break up in little pieces of cheese. Now, in our household, you, you know, we ain't throwing away the crumbs. We take them crumbs and put it on top of their bread because we know it's going to melt. But what happened when the gas wasn't paid for? The electri electricity was on, but the gas was off. Boy, you take that wax paper, put it on the ironing bowl, turn that iron on. Come on, somebody, that's broke, ain't it? Put that iron on, see that cheese start melting. <laughs> you got to figure out how to give God thanks in everything. Number three, <laughs> don't compare yourself with others. This is practically how to have an attitude of thankfulness. Don't compare yourself with others. Don't wish that your life was different. Don't wish that your life, don't, don't even do that. You don't even know the plans that God has for you. Here's the word said, God says, the plans I have for you are good. They're good. So don't you, don't you deny or won't, you gotta be careful. I want to be different. I wish I wasn't me. Don't say that. Because God's plans for you are good. There's something about you that ain't like nobody else. And once you discover the plan of God for your life, yeah. you're going to be glad about it. Do not compare yourself. You can't have a, an attitude of gratitude when you're constantly comparing yourself with somebody else. Don't compare your, it, it's amazing. The very person you're trying to compare yourself with, somebody want to be like you and you want to be like them, it's amazing. You think that don't nobody want to be like you. Just quit the comparison. Stop the comparison. Well, they got a, <laughs> they got a big, big turkey. My turkey look like a Cornish hen. <laughs> Just tell yourself, my turkey is organic. <laughs> <laughs> now, I believe that these three points can put you to a place of contentment. Let me, let me look at uh, 1 Timothy chapter 6 and 6. He says, but godliness with contentment is great gain. What does it mean to be content? It's a mind that's at ease. The ease of mind, contentment, this place of satisfaction, contentment, an ease of mind. You know, negative emotions won't let you have an ease of mind. In fact, negative emotions are there to, to destroy the ease of mind. Now, listen to me carefully. Now, in reading this, I'm thinking, all right, well, first of all, who wrote this? The Apostle Paul wrote this. Who did he write it to? It was a letter to Timothy. And I said, oh, my God, I didn't see that. The guy who wrote, Be Content, was in jail when he wrote it. He was in prison when he wrote it. Now, I didn't really get a hold of this until I actually visited the prison that Paul was in. I went to the prison that he was in. And we walked in the, it was, what, downstairs, Taffy, in, in, in a hole, really. 
and they would feed him and everything from a hole at the top. The ground, Ball's ground, was cold and eerie, and when the lights are off, it's pitch black. The guy who said, be content, be ease, have an ease of mind, was in a dark prison waiting to be uh, killed. I mean, they had his name up there, the date when he was going to get killed. And he wrote, godliness with contentment is great gain. Here's a man who should not have had an ease of mind saying, be content. Now, you may not be in line waiting execution, but he says, even in line awaiting execution, be content. And you upset because you got two eggs instead of four. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Be content. And he says, godliness with contentment equals great gain. There's something about living a life of contentment, even in the midst of hard times, that will make the difference in your life, an ease of mind. So I want to close this by showing you this. There are some benefits. There are some actual, tested, proven benefits that come from being thankful and having a, 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 a gracious attitude. I'm going, to, I'm going to give you 12 of them and then close with three scriptures and, and we're out. Number one, benefits of thank, thankfulness. It reduces depression. When you live this thankful life that I'm talking about, it will reduce depression. Number two, a thankful life will get you a promotion at work. What? Don't nobody want to promote somebody that complained and, and got a problem all the time? A thankful life will get you promotion at work. An ungrateful, well, I ain't going to say that. <laughs> number three, number three, a thankfulness, thankfulness will improve our self-esteem. You practicing living a thankful life will improve your, it's been proven, it will improve your self-esteem. Number four, thankfulness will increase our energy. I tell you what, when you start walking around and living a thankful life, man, you, you'll, you'll, you'll improve your energy. Number five, you know, being thankful will help you to develop a strong immunity system. Being thankful will help you. That attitude, that diseasement, being thankful will help you to develop strong immunity. Been proven. Number six, being thankful will decrease blood pressure. I'm on blood pressure medicine. I, I think you just need to be a little bit more thankful. Number seven, being thankful will increase sleep quality. Being thankful will increase sleep, sleep quality. I was amazed at some of these studies that they have done where Thanksgiving is concerned. Number eight, being thankful will, will reduce and cope with negative stress. Being thankful. You can go around and meditate on the bad emotions and be stressed out over it. Being thankful will reduce that stress. Number nine, being thankful will reduce negative emotions such as envy, anger, and hatred. Just being thankful. Envy, anger, hatred. Being thankful. I don't know who you, I don't know who you got coming over your house tomorrow. <laughs> you might have somebody coming over your house you don't like, and there's some kin to you. <laughs> Start the night being thankful. And you can greet them with a holy hug tomorrow. <laughs> Watch this. Being thankful will help you to become more likable. People like thankful folks. Being thankful will make you become more likable. Number 11, 
Being thankful will increase feelings of happiness and well-being. Just being thankful. The feelings will be something that will be under, those negative feelings will be under attack by being thankful. And then number 12, being thankful will increase productivity in your life. Being thankful will increase productivity in your life. Isn't that amazing? See, God is saying His will for our lives is to practice thanksgiving. In a world full of uncertainty and in the midst of unprecedented global events, the pressures of life can be overwhelming and lead to internal depression. But Christ has called us to overcome and win our internal and external battles. That's why we have designed a series just for you. You don't have to choose depression. You can choose your authority over depression and use your faith to defeat it and keep it out of your life. When you know how to properly divide the word, you know how to properly use the word. During these challenging times, boost your faith and fight the good fight against depression, anxiety, and fear with the five message series delivered from depression for just $30. Also available in this one-time offer is the Delivered from Depression series bundled with the powerful classic book, Winning in Troubled Times. Receive this $50 power pack for just $40 US dollars. Call today or visit the website on the screen to order. Renew your mind, your spirit, renew your life at the 2020 Grace Life Conference. Check out this year's speakers you don't want to miss. Creflo Dollar. You got to have your own relationship with Jesus. Taffy Dollar. I receive the gift of grace. Michael T. Smith. Let me give you news. You are not in the flesh. Gregory Dickow. It's the equalizer of every human being. And Andrew Womack. Being sensitive to the Lord can change your life. Your life will never be the same again. It's changed your mind, heart open. It's just life-changing experience. Can't miss it. Don't miss out on this opportunity to set your life back on track. Come to the 2020 Grace Life Conference at the World Dome in College Park, Georgia, July 6th through the 10th. Register by texting Grace Life to 51555 or visiting creflodollarministries.org. Seats are limited, so register today. Folks, by the grace of God, we feed and clothe people, provide houses, visit hospitals and prisons, and do so, so much more. Every time you make a financial donation to support us, you do these things as well. The tangible relief we provide to God's precious people is only possible because of your faithful support. Thank you for supporting us as we strive to reach a lost and dying world for the Lord Jesus Christ. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.